about five years ago, we um, started to uh, get interested in getting access to energy data. And in the UK, the problem has been that since the privatisation of the utilities, it's been very difficult to get access to energy data, which has made it quite difficult to undertake any research in this area. So we started to work with DEC and EST to uh, try and get access to everybody's annualised uh, gas and electricity meter data. The data on its own is not very much use from a research point of view unless you can also link that to data about the buildings and data about people in those buildings. So we started to look to see what data sets there were that you could link that told you um, something about the buildings that the meters were in and something about the people that might likely to be in the buildings. And that has resulted in various data sets being created. Uh, in particular, there are two data sets, one used by DEC and one used by ourselves called HEED and NEED. And these link uh, information about the, the meter readings plus information about the uh, properties that the meters are in. And what that's enabled us to look at for the first time is to look at the impact of different energy efficiency interventions in buildings. So, for example, um, the data set that we use enables us to know when uh, a particular building has had uh, a condensing boiler installed, which is a more efficient type of boiler. We can look at all of the properties that have had a condensing boiler installed um, in a particular year, and we can find a control group in the data set, which are similar houses, but which haven't had a condensing boiler installed in that year. We can compare the energy consumption, both the year before the boiler was installed, between that group that had the boiler installed and the control group, the year it was installed and the year after that it was installed. But from that, we can get a reasonably good measure of the real impact of a condensing boiler. That whole area of work we have started to call energy epidemiology, where we use large data sets of energy use in buildings, and now we're starting to move into transport. Why did we call it epidemiology? Well, epidemiology means upon the people. It's a word that has, um, you could say, has been sort of hijacked by the medics. Um, they have adopted the word. And there's some quite similar analogies between uh, energy and buildings research and uh, health research. And the more we started to explore these analogies, the more we got interested in it. But like all analogies, they eventually uh, break down, so you do have to be careful in, in how you apply these analogies. But the great thing about health research is that unlike energy and buildings research, which is a relatively new uh, discipline, health research has been going on for uh, hundreds of years and has been reasonably well funded uh, over a long period of time and so has evolved and developed in a way in which energy and buildings research hasn't really uh, evolved. So are there lessons that we can learn from the way that uh, health research is structured and uh, apply some of the lessons from that to the energy and buildings research to speed up our, our research in this area. So if you look at health research um, in a simplistic way, uh, some of the research is done using physiological techniques and that's really sort of a simple way of sort of building up a model and understanding of um, how the health of the body uh, operates using uh, the chemistry, biology and physics of the human body. And the analogy of that is that over the last 40 years we've mostly focused on a sort of physiological approach to the energy and buildings problem. So what we have done is we have uh, taken the thermodynamics of buildings, of uh, the appliances and services that, that are in the buildings, and we've modelled those, uh, the thermodynamics of those in the built environment. Now, there's not only a physiological approach, but there is also a psychological approach um, to health. And the analogy to psychology is that over the last decade, there's been much more interest in the behavioural aspects of energy in buildings and a move towards wanting to better understand how people behave uh, in order to uh, that ultimately results in, in, in energy use. 
Um, but as well as the physiological and the psychological, um, the health researchers also adopt an epidemiological approach. And it's not that either one or the other is better than each other. They're all um, good ways of doing research and they benefit from the different approaches. And we would argue that there probably hasn't been enough epidemiological type of research in the energy and buildings area. So rather than studying individual buildings and how they behave and the technologies uh, very often in a controlled environment, in a laboratory environment, what we're doing is we're studying the, uh, the energy use in the population of buildings because at the end of the day one of the objectives that we're trying to do is to reduce the total carbon emissions from the built stock. So we need to know how technologies and policies behave uh, for the whole population of buildings or the building stock as it's often referred to. So again, if you take the analogy between the health side, um, you can put somebody in a lab, you can administer a pill to that individual, and they will uh, react to that pill in a, in a way in which you can look at the biology and physics and chemistry of the human body as to how they interact with that. But when you apply that pill to the population, then actually you get a different response quite often from that simple response that you would get in a lab. And the analogy in the building, uh, energy and buildings area is that if you take a technology, say like a, uh, an efficient boiler, a condensing boiler, you can take that into a laboratory, you can observe how it can uh, 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 operate under more efficient conditions than a conventional boiler and potentially save energy. But when you administer that boiler uh, to the population and it's accepted um, by the population, then it can actually work in a different way. So just like a pill, um, if you uh, administer it to the population, some people may forget to take that pill, some people may, t may take a thousand pills and make themselves unwell, some people will have unintended consequences from those pills and have adverse reactions. Well, likewise, when uh, the population adopts something like a technology like the condensing boilers, boiler, you may find that some people, for some people, they will actually increase their energy use as a result of that because they will change their behaviour and the way they interact. Well, sometimes the boilers may not be installed in the way that theoretically you would expect them to be installed. So you need to understand how they perform not only in the laboratory conditions, but how they do in the general population. And that's what we sort of termed uh, epidemiology. Energy epidemiology is, is that understanding of energy use in the population. Where we think it'll be of greatest benefit is that it actually will enable us to uh, study the impact of technologies and policies that are trying to uh, either um, reduce carbon emissions, reduce the price of, uh, of, of energy in the home, uh, or actually provide greater energy security. We need to understand how people use energy for all three of those reasons, and energy epidemiology will allow us to do this. In the new Centre for Energy Epidemiology that we've now got funding for from, um, from the research councils in the UK, uh, what we're planning to do is not only apply this epidemiological approach to research in the domestic sector but also in the non-residential sector but also to try and explore its use in the transport sector as well and so over the next five years what we will be doing is working with different organisations that have access to detailed data of the energy consumption of buildings and of transport systems and linking those data sets where available to other data sets which give us better insights and enable us to uh, provide the evidence base for where the policies are working, whether those policies are things like the building regulations or individual technologies that are being introduced are actually resulting in the way that uh, we would expect them to. And if they're not, what we would like to do is to try and work, uh, find out what the causes of those differences are between how these technologies perform in laboratory situations compared to how they perform in the general population. And to, where possible, develop those technologies in a better way so that they actually result in a better performance out in the, uh, in the real world.